Welcome back to Our Life out in the country. It is a beautiful day and today we're working on the mobile home remodel again. We've done so much work and today it's finally time for drywall. I don't know how much we're going to get done today but it's beautiful out. We're starting early and I think we're ready to go. So you might be wondering why I'm outside if we're going to be doing drywall. Well first I have to start outside because I need to make some butt boards. I'll show you more of that. I have here a piece of three quarter inch OSB subfloor. I'm going to be ripping this into some smaller boards. So let me do that and then I'll show you what we're going to make with it. I cut this piece of OSB to nine inches wide and this is going to be my butt board. You're probably thinking that doesn't sound very good but it's gonna make a lot of sense when you see how it works. These are builder shims or drywall shims, and it's basically a piece of thin uh, paperboard, cardboard. And you can usually find these in the building supply stores, but they're basically for shimming out studs. If you have like a, a stud that's not straight and you're putting your drywall up, you can put these on the face, staple them on, and even out your wall. But they can also be used on this. So we're going to be putting, you know, they're about 16 of an inch thick. Right here, right here. And we're going to be stapling them to the edge of our board. Done. Now it's going to be easier to show you how this works than explain it. So let us get our first sheet up and we'll take it from there. We're going to be starting in this back corner because that's the best place for us to start. It's going to be a little tricky because we have our drywall on the floor in the way and I can't use my handy drywall lift. We might try to half use it, but we're going to try to get our first piece up there as our starter. I might try to extend this arm out as far as I can so that it can reach out over the drywall. This is going to be unbalanced, mm -hmm. but for one sheet, It might be okay. So we're gonna get it back. I'm gonna slide it um, your way. Make sure the machine doesn't tip. So let's get it. It's pretty close, right here. Go toward the wall before you tighten it up. Yep. It like made it so easy. All right, guys, that went a lot easier than I expected. The first drywall is up. This is like celebration time. But you guys want to know about the butt board, right? That's what you're thinking? <laughs> We're ready for that. As you can see, this might look a little odd to some of you, but you can see my drywall is floating. I didn't end it on a stud and you're saying, oh no, he made a mistake. He wasn't paying attention. No, that's by design. A butt board is a handy tool for people like us who aren't that great at drywalling. And what it's gonna do is help us hide our butt seams. So what we're doing is creating floating butt seams. That's what this is called, a floating butt seam. So this is the butt, and I don't know if you can see, but on drywall, there's a tapered edge on the long edge. This it slopes inward so that you have room to put your paper and your mud compound on there. But the ends are not tapered. They're just full thickness along these sides. So when you butt two sheets up together, you end up putting the tape and the compound on top and you get a hump in your ceiling. And that hump is really hard to hide if you don't know what you're doing. And I'm not great at drywalling. We're gonna put this right up here and hope the plastic isn't too tight because I didn't compensate well for that. Did I? Well, I think we're in there. Now, ideally you want your drywall to, to stop at the very center of your bay, but we're just 
going with the ceiling here. So you put this in. We're gonna screw these in like normal. Pretty close together. And now when I put my next sheet on, what this is gonna do is bend the edge of this plywood up just slightly, just slightly. The only mistake I made was putting this plastic way too tight because I wasn't thinking about it. So let's get the next one up and we'll show how it works. Now we haven't shown this in a long time and many of you probably haven't seen it. This is our drywall lift. And basically this is just a tool to hold the drywall up to the ceiling so we don't have to hold it above our heads and, and break our backs trying to get this house done. We put it right up here. Well, this tilts. Let me show you. Tilt it down. You can set your drywall with all the handle there. Let me get this right. Let me get this right. Okay. So this tilts down, you put your drywall here, you lift it into place, and you crank the handle up. It's pretty simple. And this is where it gets scary, because we get to see if I made my light box hole <laughs> properly. If you guys see a video edit, <laughs> then you'll know. It's looking okay. I'm a little snug on my length. We can trim that. Now what we're gonna do is kind of push upwards. You don't want to just screw through it because you can see it's pushing it down right now. We want to push it up into place kind of gentle, gentle like and screw it. Let me put another one in for fun. You see any other spots I could use another one for fun? Yes, you missed one over here. That was fun. All right guys, so here's how it works. Our butt joint was floating and we created this butt board to attach the two sheets together. It's just as strong as if it was on a joist but what this does is because we put those cardboard shims here and here, is it causes the board to, to bow in toward the center and it creates its own, let's see if we can see it, creates its own taper. Can you see that gap? So you can see there's space under there. It's kind of hard to see, but you, you can see it. So now we created our own artificial taper. The drywall sucks up a little bit and that little bit of space gives me the space I need to put my paper and my compound when I'm taping the seams. And I can float it and it'll be smooth with the ceiling. It won't be a hump. If you had them both ending on the wood like you would think naturally to do, you, you would have to create a hump to hide it and I hate that. Yeah, that's really difficult to deal with. So that's how we're doing it. We're gonna have a perfectly flush level ceiling when we're done. Awesome. Now that we explained all that, it's gonna get a lot easier. Hopefully we can uh, cut out these holes all cleanly and get these pieces up. I would like to get the ceiling done like right now fast. Yeah. And then the walls should be a piece of cake. So I know you guys wanna see how that other light socket came out. Let's look at that. Outlet box, what do you call it? There it is. Perfect. My only mistake was the uh, the ends were a little tight. Ready? Mm -hmm. Cutting drywall is super simple. A lot of you guys already know how to do it, but some of you don't. So I'm gonna show you what we do. Now this row is gonna be starting with a short piece because we wanna stagger the joints. You don't want all your joints lining up on the ceiling. So we're gonna have two 
butt joints in this one. Yeah. So my first one is going to be 34 inches. If you're doing drywall, buy a drywall square like this because these are handy. Aren't they also called T-squares? Guess so. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> and we're just gonna use a regular knife like you'd use to- Like a box, box cutter. cutter. Yep, and score it. You don't gotta go Hulk on this. You just wanna cut the paper and a little bit into the drywall. There it is. If you're paranoid, you can go another time, but really I'm just gonna show you that one time is enough. I usually go two times through it just because I like a nice clean break. So we score it. You already hear a break. You just bend it. And that's it. And that's pretty scary since that's your walls and ceiling in your house. <laughs> and then I'm just going to go through the back. There it is. Here's the first piece. You want to hold that? Um, 12 and a half and 15 and 5 eighths. It was, the light was 15 and 5 eighths over and 12 and 5 eighths from the wall. So that's where it goes. Don't be afraid of messing up. I know it's annoying, but it will happen. I have messed up on holes. I've cut them on the wrong sides of boards because when you're upside down, and backwards, it's very hard to get the measurements right in your head. You have to think when it's flipped upside down, how is it going to be? That's on the hard ceiling? for me. Accidents happen. Start over. Not a big deal. I always, always mark out where I want my screws while it's on the ground. Unless I forget. Because it makes it so much easier for me. Let's see if we did this right. So we're using a drywall bit and it basically has this metal collar on it so that when you drill your screw in, it stops it from going too far. And that way you're not plowing your screws right through the board. So that's all that is. I'll get it up here and just hand the drill to me. There it is, two for two, not bad. We're doing good so far, Ash. So there's three more boards ready to go. Nine inches wide, doesn't have to be perfect. With an inch and a half strip of shim on either side. And these shims happen to be about a sixteenth of an inch thick, it's plenty. But sometimes you might find them a little bit thicker. That's fine. Just don't go too thick. And this is full width 48 inch OSB. Get it as close to three quarter inch as thick as you can because that way your screws won't be poking up through the back. Alright guys, this is coming out so good. You can see the ceiling is going up pretty fast. I just got my second floating butt seam going. You see how that creates that little uh, divot? Yeah, space right there. Perfect. Now it's time for the light check. Let's see how my light holes did. This one is looking good, but you might notice I almost made a major mistake. My first one was marked on the wrong side and that's exactly what I was talking about. Always double check. But that one came out good. And this one is okay. There it is guys, the ceiling 
is done. It looks so good. This was the last section we did. Almost messed up again. I don't know what my brain is doing. I keep getting them backwards, but I caught it. The good news is that at least I didn't mess anything up. We didn't waste any drywall. And it looks awesome. Look at it, we have a ceiling. Now let me talk about some weight issues since we're hanging drywall in here. This has come up a few times. I've wanted to talk about it and I always forget. We're doing this to this home specifically. I don't recommend you doing it to every mobile home. Our mobile home is sitting on a concrete block foundation. The foundation is very strong, very level. The walls sit right on the foundation. It's very well supported. It's built practically like a house, just a little cheaper. Adding all this excess weight, the drywall, the lumber, the walls, everything, it can cause stress on a standard mobile home, especially not on a foundation. So while I'm not saying it can't be done, I'm saying be careful, do your research, and make sure your house can hold it. Not every mobile home is built the same, and not every mobile home can handle this weight um, the same. So I feel comfortable doing what we're doing, and if we have any structural problems, I can address those problems, but I don't anticipate anything. In fact, the front of the house already has drywall all over the paneling, and it hasn't caused any problems there. It's literally on a block foundation, nice and strong. So I just wanted to give you guys that heads up in case you say, hey, I wanna do that. I don't wanna discourage you, but make sure that your mobile home can handle it because um, if it's just sitting on blocks and it doesn't have a proper foundation, it's gonna settle, it's gonna move, and those outside walls aren't gonna have a lot of strength underneath them to hold all of it up. Now, if you live in a standard home on a block foundation, it doesn't even have to be a mobile home, go at it, have fun, build out your walls. It's probably going to handle it fine, but just check out the structure first. Well, we got the lift out of the room. Now, we're going to do the walls. I think we're going to start over here somewhere. So I'm waiting for Ashley to get back and then we're going to start throwing the drywall up. I've been using this knife. I just picked this up. I usually use a jigsaw believe it or not, to cut my light box holes and all that. I find that it makes a very clean drywall cutting. I couldn't find the jigsaw I wanted, so I just went ahead and bought this to get the project going. This is really cool, look at it. It folds, comes out, and you can change the blade with any reciprocating saw blade. So I chose this kind of rough wood one as a fine tip. I always hate buying drywall knives because you always have to throw them out when they get dull because they're usually attached. I love that you can change the blade on that. And I could put a metal cutting blade in there and use it to cut some uh, pipe or something. You know, I could put different blades in there, longer, shorter, different teeth size. I could cut PVC. That's pretty cool. This is handy. Here's the first wall piece in place. And it looks awesome. I'm getting ready to cut out a really sensitive and delicate piece. I have to cut out this whole opening for the window, which means we're gonna have a, a pretty thin piece on top, and we're gonna have a pretty thin piece on the side. It's going right there. So I'm gonna cut this off. So we're gonna literally have this skinny piece going like that. Wow. And we have to get it up there without breaking it. To cut out this big opening, um, I'm gonna be using my saw to saw through, saw through both these sides. And then we're gonna have this scored and this will create a hinge. It'll just break on this line. So now that the sides are done, we'll just kind of tilt that back. Oh, there it is. There, you ready? Ashley and I have been working diligently and we are to the last 
piece. We're almost done. So we wanted to share this with you guys because this is the last drywall to go up in the room and it's gonna be like totally complete and then we'll show you the whole room how it looks. Well, here it is guys. The room is done and we got our echo back. A lot of you guys mentioned how after we put the insulation up, how it was not echoey and it was just nice and quiet. Well, the walls are up so that we lost that. But look how good it looks. Nice and bright and clean and... Let's do a spin around. All the insulation is covered. It looks nice. Yep. This is awesome. This is moving along so fast. And you guys might notice that there's still no closets. And you might say, why is he not building closets? In a conventional build, um, when you frame up a house, the framers come in and they frame everything, including the closets, and then the drywallers come in and they drywall. Since we're doing this ourselves, we're the framers and the drywallers, we can do it whatever order we want. And I did it this way because drywalling inside a closet is challenging. It's hard to get the drywall in there. You have to cut a lot more of the drywall to fit into all the little areas and you can have more nailers. This way, we just have a nice clean wall of drywall. I have my, br my bracing in the wall already where I'm gonna put my uh, partition walls and those will be a lot easier to drywall. And what's also good about this is that if we ever wanna change our closet layout because we're doing kind of a weird custom layout, we could literally remove the closet and still have our walls intact and not have to do a lot of work to change it. Mm -hmm. So that's just the route we're going. Closets will be coming soon. They're going to be a little bit different. We have a plan, so it's going to be good. You happy with how it all came out? Yeah. Progress. It looks um, like it doesn't even look like the same room right now. <laughs> Picture what it was all old paneling and nasty carpet. Yeah. We got the, dr the drywall out of here. We just put it in the hallway for now. Everything's clean. I don't think there's anything else to show for now. So drywall done. Next job is closets. Yep. Closets. I think I'm going to build the closets before starting the compound so I can just do them all together. So that'll be coming next. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching and until next time, take care. Bye.